Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Adi Sri Krishna, and I will be talking about our research that focused on investigating ecopartition energy parameters in PEV GRB one nine zero one one four C. So, GRB one nine nine four C was an example of a gamma ray burst, which are intense pulses of gamma rays that emerge from the launch of ultra relative ultra relativistic jets along the rotation axis. of collapsing stars this particular gamma ray burst was observed on january 14th 2019 and it is of particular importance in the field of astrophysics because it is the highest um, grb ever recorded with a peak photon energy of 0.2 to 1 tera electron volts it had a particularly low redshift of 0.42 And uh, total isotropic energy of 2.5 into 10 to the power of 53. Now, this was the first GRD that significantly violated the 10 GeV synchrotron limit, which was the mechanism earlier used to explain the physics behind the production of gamma ray bursts. And um, with the expected theoretical understanding that if a gamma ray burst would to ever be found to have violated the synchrotron limit. the natural answer to that explanation would be synchrotron self compton which has an additional inverse compton inverse compton component after the synchrotron component under which an electron loses a part of its energy to a photon upon collision now since this was the first grd that was where fsc was unequivocally unequivocally observed and proved um we saw that in the analysis of previous studies of this grb the inverse compton component um the dominance of the inverse compton component is expected to decrease and eventually become unimportant with time and in this analysis there are two equipartition energy parameters that are are considered as are of particular importance which is one epsilon e which is a fraction of energy in the electron and epsilon b which is a fraction of energy of the burst in the magnetic field now in all analyses so far these are taken to be constant in the two most popular models which is a generic and pair balanced model for the simplicity sake since a lot of the parameters are estimated to effectively understand the physics behind gamma ray burst however there have been selective studies that have previously assumed gamma ray um, Uh, equipartition energy parameters to not be constant um, which are three in particular which is filgas et al and van der uh, van der host et al that consider two different grbs but showed that maybe epsilon e actually is inversely proportional to time and with uh, uh, with the relationship epsilon e is actually proportional to the power negative 2 However, there is also another study that was recently conducted by Misra et al. that showed this particular GRB actually had a direct proportional relationship with epsilon with time, and epsilon b had an inverse relationship with time. So we take a different approach rather than using spectral fits to play around with the values of these partial energy parameters and find how they may vary with time. We use existing spectral fits specifically from magic et al um, that was published in nature in 2019 for their spectral energy distribution from time 204 hours to 3.125 days and after taking these spectral fits we found the break frequencies these are the points in which will the nature of the energy in electron changes by finding the maximum change of slope in those graphs by using second and third derivative slopes and in step 3 we found that those those three points were the points where the power law actually changes in each spectral graph lastly we derived the slopes of the frequency versus log frequency flux to show that the system obeys slow cooling during this time frame uh and the results that we found was that the break frequencies with time are presented on the table on the left 
where VSE is a self-absorption synchrotron fre frequency. VM is a minimum energy gained by an electron after a shock wave. And VC is the critical frequency of the electron. We found that the system evolves from fast to slow cooling in the early afterglow around 4,000 seconds. And the energy peak decreases with time and moves towards energy, uh, lower level, energy levels with the peak being found at 10 to the power 14 hertz. Now, after finding those break frequency parameters, uh, break frequencies, we found the epsilon E and epsilon B at five different time frames that are quoted on the table here at 0 0.1 days, 0 0.16 days, 0 0.28 days, 1.6 days, and 3.13 days. And this is, these are the graphs that we obtained from, for epsilon E and epsilon B. We saw that epsilon E is consistently under theoretical limits of one and above 10 to the power of negative five. However, its values increase exponentially with a decreasing gradient to become constant at around 0 0.85. And epsilon B decays to reach theoretical constant beginning at a relatively high fraction of 0 0.12 um, which, and under the theoretical limit of 0 0.5 and progresses to much lower values of 10 to the power negative five. Now these understandings also help us find out the Compton Y parameter of the GRB with time. This is the Compton Y parameter is the epsilon E to epsilon V ratio, which begins at 1.3 at 2 to power, uh, 2.4 hours and reaches a value of 10 to the power 4 by 3.125 seconds, 3.125 days. This further signifies the existence of a component beyond the synchrotron component in the form of inverse IC, as well as demonstrates the observability of the IC component as the ratio of epsilon E to epsilon B should always stay one, uh, um, stay more than one if e efficient production of SSC is to be expected. Now, these values can possibly explain by, can possibly be explained by epsilon E increasing with time as more electrons lose energy through synchrotron radiant, radiation and the additional SSC uh, emission and the IC scattering become more dominant as a value of epsilon E saturated. Simultaneously, epsilon B can be explained to decrease as the magnetic field loses the, decrease exponentially as the magnetic field uh, decelerates as the ejecta uh, moves into the non-magnetized external region and thus saturates. These findings are contradictory to the current understanding of the IC dominance with time, since the IC dominance, as I talked about earlier, is expected to become less important with time. However, with epsilon E increasing, it shows that IC actually starts to dominate more in the later afterglow, as well as the findings of Mishra et al. that show that epsilon E decreases and epsilon B increases with time. This uh, altered understanding of the progression of the decopartition energy parameters can be very particularly helpful in the extra element that is needed by current uh, models to explain the fast evolution of the spectrum peak that was observed through the break frequencies. And accounting for this evolution, we uh, can greatly improve the comparison between the predicted and observed spectral uh, evolution and internal shock model in a burst, uh, making the expected and actual values found by scientists more cohesive, as well as highly, lead to more highly accurate models. Uh, sir, you have two minutes to thank conclude, you. please. That's it, I'm done, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, do we have any question for this presentation, please? Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. We don't have a question for you. Thank you.